Hello, I'm Krista McNamara, Managing Editor with ABRN Magazine. Measuring vehicles before completing an estimate can offer a huge advantage to shops in both cycle time and profit margins. So we're here today with uh, Robert Hornito. He's the owner of Pacific Collision Equipment Company and Tom Ballier. He's the sales and technical manager in Orange and San Diego counties. And they're going to talk with us today about the advantages of measuring for dollars and how this process makes sense and also how you can put it into motion at your shop. So Tom and Robert, can you tell us a little bit more about how this process of measuring for dollars makes sense? Well, it's very simple. Uh, basically, what you're going to do is you're going to do a complete teardown and measure the vehicle. Efficiency is the key to the collision repair process. If you, can, if you can be efficient and find all the damage and reduce your supplements, you will not only make a lot more dollars and cents, but you're going to do more throughput through the shop in less time, which there again enables you to make more dollars and cents as well. So it's a huge process and it's, it's vitally important in every industry in the country and the world who's efficient, who's making a lot of whatever is, is efficient and that's the way they make money. It's just the best way, best practices. Yeah, when we talk about measuring the vehicle and doing a, a complete or meticulous teardown, we're, we're looking at not just measuring the lower body but the upper body and suspension. Uh, that really covers all your bases. Uh, if you're if you're going to blend into a door or, or painting into a quarter panel, that those parts are detrimmed up front, so we can catch all those little broken parts and broken pieces that that can get ordered as you're writing the estimate, as opposed to finding those problems out later later down the road. Yeah, and upper body is is huge. We don't want to uh, dismiss that. It's really really very big because most of the time. Um, in most cases, you, you're not measuring the upper body. You have collision damage in the front left frame rail, for example, and the upper body isn't measured in the process. And what happens is when you miss the upper body um, dimensional uh, inaccuracies, uh, parts aren't fitting properly, and it's, and it's being repaired probably for free uh, because it was missed. Had you measured the complete upper body and found any misalignment, then it can be corrected, and when you're going to put your new parts, your new quarter panel in place, your new fenders in place, etc., everything fits nice. It's it's easy. It's it just makes everything more much more efficient uh, to find that way up front. Mm -hmm. And suspension, suspension is huge. Yes, suspension is a huge, a huge time killer. When when the, the vehicle is being repaired, it's on on the frame machine or the frame bench. Um, and, and you've done all your pulling, you've done all your measuring, you've repaired the vehicle, or so you think you've repaired the vehicle. You, you send the car out to a wheel alignment center unless you have in-house wheel alignment capabilities, which is pretty much unheard of in most uh, most collision centers. Uh, you're, you're burning up two of your, your technician's time um, to get the car there and back, and if it fails the suspension or the, uh, the wheel alignment, now, now we have to look at what is the problem. So, Measuring up front and, and using your tools, whether it's being taught by, by an expert or, or using a, a measuring system to diagnose those components, whether it's the control arm or the knuckle or the spindle or a strut, that you can really pinpoint what those are, document what they are up front, and, and get those to the right party so you can, you can get those parts up front and you're, you're just not delaying the process. Yeah, it's really important that you're actually measuring the components and determining which part is bent rather than just replacing parts and, and okay, well, let's place, replace this part and then see if it works and that didn't work, so let's bring it back and let's place, replace this part and then we do it again. It's back and forth, back and forth. Eventually, you replaced everything because you don't know which one actually took care of the problem. But had you measured each component individually, then you can pinpoint which part it is and order that particular part and get the job done quickly. And the problem is that most shops don't have the ability or the knowledge uh, to measure suspension points. If, if they know how, they don't have the tooling. If they have the tooling, they don't know how. Combining the two together, measuring the suspension, just makes all the difference in the world, just going right up front, which one the vehicle. It's huge. Very good. Absolutely. Tell us a little more about what you're seeing in terms of the real world application. What is your experience with shops who are using repair planning? Well, we have quite a few shops um, that use repair planning, but we do see that I'd say over 80% of the shops out there are not using any kind of repair planning, and it's basically um, winging it right from the get-go. So. Uh, 
Um, we actually went out and spoke with a few uh, uh, shops in our area that, that are doing repair planning or, or, or starting repair planning. We have a little video we could, uh, we could show you that will uh, help, help get some of that information across the board. Yeah, and let's, and let's make this clear too that uh, repair planning isn't writing an estimate only. Every shop is writing an estimate, but that's not repair planning. We really need to dissect this. Repair planning is is writing the estimate, doing a teardown, measuring the vehicle, lower side, upper body, and suspension complete. Writing a complete and thorough estimate right from the very beginning, rather than through the process of repairing the vehicle. That's that's the point of repair planning. That's where you get your cycle time efficiencies. That's where you start making dollars and cents. So let's go ahead and roll the video. You'll see. Perfect. In regard to cycle time, what is the number one hindrance in getting the vehicles off the road? It's simple. Get it right the first time. Get it right on the front side. We are notorious for taking longer on the front side, trying to identify everything than our shops are. And I'm okay with that because on the front side, I'll catch it more than they will, and then going through the rest of the process, it's going to fly. There's still a human aspect of it where the guy won't miss it. They won't see certain damage. They don't. They don't see that puddle hidden behind you know one part or another. And, and so, is it anything? We got to get better at that part. We really, you know, getting another piece of equipment. Because I want something dedicated. You know, we've got 4,000 square feet of repair planning area, and they need the right tools over there. The same as these guys need the right tools, and the right frame equipment in their stalls. They got to have the right tools to repair planning. So if it means we have to get them that measuring system, then so be it. Because it'll help. You know, if it really helps them find extra 10% on every sheet. That, that's not a bad thing either. Uh, cycle time is the reduction of the amount of time it, it takes to get that quality. And that's, uh, that's why cycle time is important. Cycle time has taken a new meaning, and that meaning relates to rental cars. Uh, a lot of us do insurance business, and so uh, they care about how much rental car they pay for. Uh, and that becomes a new rating in itself. We were already doing it for ourselves, and we're already doing it for the customers because those things make sense. But now we've got the third party, the guys that pay, and uh, they want to cut that down. To be competitive in the marketplace, we have to be better at it. Um, everybody knows um, blueprinting is, is, is the buzzword. It's the, it's the way it's going, tearing cars down and writing one complete sheet, doing things one time. It's faster than doing it twice, no matter what you do. So one of the things that like we were talking about earlier that's so important is identifying damage so that we can fix it. Because that's what we do with this. We fix cars. So we, we, we need to identify that damage so that we can A, uh, get paid to fix it, uh, B, we can get all the parts that we need one time, we get those orders, we source them all, we can give the customer an accurate target date. Um, and to take it further, now we were talking about um, a little bit more extensive damage, things like measuring the frame and, 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 and little holes like suspension damage. That's a great, uh, that's a great one because uh, body shops don't tend to have alignment machines, and uh, so we, uh, as an industry, take the vehicles to another shop as a sublet to get that diagnosed. The problem with that is, is that uh, suspension is complicated, and um, a lot of us just don't understand it. So we diagnose what we see as snapped in half or bent in half, and uh, then we get the car all done, and we put that one or two parts in. And everything's done. It's, it's ready to wash it. And uh, now we drive down the street with two people usually, uh, drop it off, and then uh, we get a phone call from the alignment shop that says, oh, it needs a strut or a knuckle or whatever it is. 
And uh, now we have to go and drive down there, pick it up, bring it back, rewrite the estimate, order those parts. Usually they're not stock, so you're waiting another two days um, to get those. Put that in, drive it down there. Hopefully it's solved at that time. Hopefully you've got a good alignment guy, right? And he, he solved at that time. And if we could have done that in the beginning, if we could have, uh, if we measure, and that's what we do, we measure here, we measure the suspension points. We have um, documentation, so the insurance company doesn't just go, How did, why, why do you think that? It's documented, it's right here, here it is. It's, and once they see it, well, the questions stop. Oh, okay. And uh, so, so now we've diagnosed it. Well, I was already waiting for the vendor, because I need a vendor right on this job, right? So I was already waiting for the vendor, so it didn't cost anything more to wait for the strut at that time. So we don't lose any time. It's only when it's the second time or the third time. It's only when we have to start and stop. But think about the estimator's time. You know, it takes 20 minutes to, you know, get up there, maybe even 15 minutes to get up on a lift and to measure those things. But how long does it take you to write something? I mean, seriously, from the beginning to the end. I mean, from, hey, it's got a problem, to actually opening the file, sitting down, writing it, putting it on the estimate, ordering it, calling the parts guy, ordering it up. If you can do that in 15 minutes, you're out of here, because I, I, would, I would take you all day long. Um, so getting it up front, I mean, that's the key to the whole thing. Poor planning. Uh, you know, from undrivable vehicles, uh, you know, doing pre-ordering of parts, uh, in particular, that's that's a huge savings in time. Um, but the biggest thing, in my opinion, is having a, a proper disassembly. Uh, you know, whether it be you know belt moldings or um, seals and uh, things like this. That at the end, you know, if you don't get it addressed at the very beginning, in the end, it ends up just killing your cycle time because you're waiting for you know this, that, and the other as far as parts go. You know, if you're able to uh, measure you know the structural points and get that dialed in. Early, you know, the earlier the better, you know, so that uh, you can, you know, make a repair plan that's, that's proper for the car, get the vendor on the hook for what we need, or all our homework up front, and that stuff is coming in, and we're just moving through it instead of, you know, oh, we need to do this now, and now we lose however many days because of this issue that could have been caught a week before, or two days before, or whatever. So obviously the speakers on this video really highlight the importance of what you were talking about, really doing this repair planning process from beginning to end and the benefits. So what does it actually take to put this in motion in your shop? Well, the first thing you, you really need is a dedicated repair planning area. And in this area would include a, a lift, uh, a measuring system, uh, you know, this is basically where the plan begins. So you really want to have uh, your, your estimating part. You want to have all the tools there that, that you would need to to follow that job. If it's a front end collision, all the way back to what what is the last process going to be? That way, all the parts get ordered. Everything is laid out. Everything is labeled properly. Um, that's that's probably the biggest the biggest part of the uh, the um, what it takes to get it yeah. done. So you're basically going to have dedicated space a dedicated lift, possibly a dedicated measuring system. You're going to raise the vehicle up in the air. You're going to do a visual inspection. You're going to do a partial teardown or as much teardown as necessary. And you're going to measure the vehicle. That's the final component. And the, a lot of um, a lot of our, our customers um, or shops, a lot of shops, I should say, just basically say that, uh, well, I'm not getting paid to measure the vehicle. Therefore, I'm not going to measure the vehicle. Well, you know, I take a different take on that. Um, you measure it anyway, because if you don't find damage, wonderful. At least everybody knows there is no damage. But if you find damage, well then, hey, that's a win-win for everybody as well, because now we know the cars are going to go down the road with some damage still left in the vehicle, or 
uh, which could potentially be very dangerous. That can be very harmful to the person that driving the vehicle in subsequent collisions and what their damage is left in. So it's very important all the way through. If you're not getting paid for it, don't sweat it. Just do it anyway. It's really doesn't. It really doesn't take very long to do that. It's a very simple process to measure the vehicle. Yeah, and, and it's important to remember that this is a process. It's a methodology. It's it's, it's just the right way of doing business. You know, whether it's it's customer service or, or being thorough. I mean, it's just it's just how it should be done. Right. And you want to break it down. I mean, if the vehicle um, is going to be repaired and there is there are no panels or no components of the vehicle that have to be removed for the repair, or it's just a you know, a small dent or it's just a little bumper repair and it can be repaired while it's still on the vehicle. Well, you know what? Likelihood of it having any subsequent damage underneath is, is slim. But if if the bumper was damaged to the point where you need to remove it to repair it, there's likely damage underneath there. If if a panel had to be removed for repair, such as a quarter panel, or the door had to be reskinned, you have to remove it, you know, likelihood of damage being further into the vehicle is very likely, and it's important that you go ahead and, and determine for certain whether there is or is not any damage there. That's very important. So it becomes a process. If you do this routinely, the car comes in, it gets lifted, it gets partially torn down, it gets estimated, it gets measured, and the estimate builds. If you continuously do that with every repair, you will see some great benefit in your shop. You're going to see the efficiencies go up. You're going to see your cycle times improve. You're going to see uh, technicians that are going to be a lot happier because the parts are fitting better and faster and the cars are getting in and out. They're making more money. Everybody, it's just the whole process is just a slam dunk. It's just a smart way of doing this. Robert, Tom, thank you so much for your time and insights today on how the measuring for dollars process can really help shops to be more efficient in so many areas in their business. Um, for more information on how Pacific Collision Equipment has really implemented this process in their shop, you can visit their website at www.crashtools.com. So thank you so much and have a good day. Thank you, Krista. Thank you.